My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. This is Monday Matinee on the Mutual Audio Network. Come on, let's all go to the lobby. Because people are staring at us listening to these shows while we're in the theater. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Want to go over these new poll numbers? I'm a little beat. What if we just have a drink and call it a day? Works for me. What can I pour you? Whiskey, please. You got it. I'll spare you the details till we're on the road, but just so you know, we're seeing something of groundswell in support, even in the rural parts of the territory. Wait. Shh. Did you hear that? What? What is it? What's happening? Devin, we need to get out of here. We... Good evening, Madam Secretary. Hey, what is this? What are you doing? You can't just barge in here. You... (gasps) No! You bastard. Who are you men? What do you want? Aw, don't be upset, lady. We're just two fellas working a job. The bad news is... Our job is you. Why did you do that? Wasn't that man your partner? He thought he was. Look, we need to get out of here. Quick, you're gonna have to trust me. Spoken Signal Audio Drama Presents Agents by Robert Arnold Episode 6, Ulysses Technology Mr. Fellows, Claude, saved my life. He brought me here, told me to stay indoors, promised I'd be safe. And so far I have been. But when I saw the news, the attack... Yeah, we were there. In fact, his last words brought us to you. He was a good man. Jonas must have had him working undercover, posing as an assassin. And somehow, he got himself involved with the crew that was sent to take you out. I guess they figured out the double cross. I'm not so sure. Mr. Fellows maintained his cover by claiming my security detail fought back harder than anticipated, killing his colleague and allowing me to escape. Then why did those gunmen come after him? There was... something else. What? Please understand. If I share this information with you, then you will be in exactly the same danger he was. I think we're in it already. Vince? Yeah. What's one more death threat, right? Go ahead. A few months ago, my people in the State Department got wind of... a a plot. Something originating from inside the current administration. What kind of plot? I don't know exactly. All we had were clues, hints, but it had the hallmarks of something major, so my people were asking around. I believe that may have been what prompted the attempt on my life. I told Mr. Fellows about it, and he offered to help look into it. And you think he got too close? In which case, I fear his death may have been my fault. Mm, I'm more inclined to blame the guys with the guns. So what did he find out, exactly? Not enough to get a clear picture. 
but as I understand it, somewhere in the territory there is a train car. <gasps> what was that? Down. Get down! Oh, oh God. <sighs> Snipers! <sighs> Miss Stevenson, get close to the wall there. Stay low. Could someone have followed you here? It's possible. I, I wasn't really thinking about being tailed. You think it's our friend from the rooftops the other night? He did. Oh, no. Damn it. Vince, we need to get her out of here. Hey, Elaine, it's only us. What? He's only shooting through this window, the one near us. He's not trying to hit Miss Stevenson. Are you sure? Do you remember what he said to me? I think he's trying to rescue her. Then how do we call him off? Uh, Maybe we do exactly that. Hand me that vase. Okay, here. What are you... I'm going to lift it up very slowly in front of the window. Just to see... Ah. So he's not a fan of daisies. Miss Stevenson, you see that picture frame near you? Can you hold it up in front of that window like I just did with the vase? All right. Vince. Careful. Be careful. Don't give him any part of you to hit. There. There, see? Yeah, but that's just a picture frame. Right. Miss Stevenson, what happens if you put your hands up to the window? Vince, no! It's, it's, it's all right if it will help. Slow. Go slow. You see? Nothing. Now what? Do this. Signal. Um, signal eight. The number eight. All right. What are you doing? Just hold on. Okay. Now five. And five again. Then seven, four, one, two. All right. Uh, All right, I've done it. Oh, my God. We are here to rescue Madeline Stevenson. We are not trying to hurt her. Then we should talk. That's close enough. Where's your firepower? Big ones put away. Small ones here in this pocket. Don't make me demonstrate. Secretary Stevenson, are you all right? I'm all right. Please, these people are friends. They were sent here to help me. We'll see about that. Who sent you? All right, then. I'll tell you. You work for a man who calls himself Mr. Jonas, after the radio character. And that man is directly responsible for the attempt on Madeline Stevenson's life. What? No. No, Mr. Jonas had nothing to do with that. It was one of his agents who saved her, hid her out here. Yes, as a double cross. And now that man is dead. Who are you, anyway? Who do you work for? I represent a group of concerned citizens who refuse to allow people like your boss to seize power. Seize power? Listen, pal, we clearly attended two very different orientation sessions. Mr. Jonas has been taking down the powerful. Remember Hockstead? That was his doing. Of course. Secretary Hockstead was embezzling from the party. He had to go. Wait, you think Mr. Jonas is a party operative? They're exactly who we're fighting against. I'm sure that's what he told you. But think about it. How many details does he share about these little missions he sends you on? Has he ever given you enough information to see the full picture? His whole M.O. is puzzles. His whole M.O. is shadows and subterfuge. Isn't it conceivable that Mr. Jonas could be taking advantage of your good intentions, your goodwill, to accomplish his own goals? No, that can't be. It can't. Please, if they believe this man can be trusted... All right, I'll tell you what. Why don't we go see him and ask? (laughs) Are you serious? We don't know where he is. He contacts us when he needs us. There's no way to just go out and find him. There may be a way. (laughs) 
Evening, folks. Welcome to the Columbia Hotel. How can I help you? Omni. My manager is here. Make it quick. We need to see Mr. Jonas. Are you crazy? You know how this works. Omni, it's an emergency. Life and death. See those two people who walked in with us? Yes, who are they? We can't tell you that right now. Not until we clear a few things up. But we can tell you that the man has a gun in his coat pocket and that he is making some pretty wild claims. I don't see how that's my problem. Or Mr. Jonas's. Omni, please. Look, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be cold, but telling you anything without clearance could put the whole organization in danger. How much do you know about the whole organization? Excuse me? That man back there? He's claiming Mr. Jonas is behind some really evil stuff. He's lying. He's trying to confuse you. I think so, too. But we need to know for sure. Omni, please. We wouldn't ask if it weren't important. I thought you two were supposed to be off active duty for a while. This one found us. Please. (sighs) There's... An address, where I send things that need to get to him. Don't get your hopes up. It's probably just a mailbox. It's something. We'll take it. Yes, we will. Thank you. All right, but if this gets traced back to me, we may all get left out in the cold. Or worse. Let me get a pen. I don't understand. You think your contact has an office in this building? We don't know, but this is the address Omni gave us. We're looking for something called Ulysses Technology. Oh, there's a directory. Whoa, Hoss. Don't go running off. Is it really necessary to continue pointing that weapon at them? They have been nothing but cooperative. Don't worry, Madam Secretary. For a sniper, he's a terrible shot. You saw him back at the house. Miss Stevenson... My first priority is to protect you. If you insist on joining us for this little adventure, then I'm not taking any chances. As for you, those were warning shots. I'm not in the business of murdering people. Oh, so you just shoot at them in a friendly fashion. Listen. It's not here. What do you mean? Look, nine floors of tenants and there's no Ulysses technology anywhere. Perhaps we've been sent on a wild goose chase. Omni did say it may just be a mailbox. Or maybe your man led us into a trap. It's not a trap. It's a puzzle. With Mr. Jonas, it always is. Huh. What kind of puzzle? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Think. Ulysses technology, maybe. It's an anagram. Mm. Uh, Lus. Uh, Sly. Lie. Us. Sly uses. Doesn't sound like anything. Okay, uh, Ulysses, what did Ulysses do? Anybody remember their undergraduate poetry courses? (laughs) Remember them? I used to teach them. Can't imagine that's ever come in handy before. Um, Ulysses is the Roman name for Odysseus, right? Hero of the Odyssey. After the Trojan War, he and his crew wandered for ten years. That doesn't bode well for us. There's got to be more to it. Well, uh, they blind a cyclops, uh, get turned into pigs, escape the sirens. Does any of that mean anything? Come on, Vince, think. Your time to shine, poet. Please don't call me that. I... Hang on. Elaine, you said this place has nine floors? Yeah. Maybe it's not the Odyssey. Then what? Ulysses also shows up in Dante's Inferno, which has nine circles of hell. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Which circle is he in? Number eight, Counselors of Fraud. Cute. And he and Diomedes show up in Canto... Canto 26? So, suite 826, eighth floor? Seems like a real stretch. That's Mr. Jonas for you. Come on, elevators are this way. I'm sure we could have figured out how to do that a little more quietly. We've been doing things your way. Go. 
doesn't look like much. Just some bland office. And what are we searching for exactly? Well, if Mr. Jonas isn't here, then some way to get in touch, maybe? Or else some evidence of what he's really up to? Elaine, are you sure you want to open this can of worms and risk getting us blacklisted? Or worse, all because some gunman... I know, but we've got to. It's like I told you. If we can't trust each other, we're lost. Okay, I'll start with these files. Uh, Vince, will you check the desks? And maybe I can look over here. Just stay clear of the two of them, Madam Secretary. Leave me a good line of sight. You could help, you know. Why? I don't need any evidence. I already know the score. Right. Because some nobody told you... Vince! Come look at this! What is it? Files. On us. And all the others. Okay, so he keeps some information on his agents. That's no surprise. Yeah, but listen. This is from a memo in your file. Witness to fellows clean up. Continue to monitor for signs of disloyalty. Clean up? And look, it's signed by Overstreet. Oh my god. Should I be impressed? Who is over- <laughs> Evening all. Forgive the dramatic entrance, I was hoping it wouldn't prove necessary. Mr. Flowers, check Mr. Bishop for additional weapons, please. I'll take that. Move. Stand by them. That is Mr. Overstreet. Funny. I know this guy is Mr. Maxwell. What a strange crew we find assembled here, Mr. Flowers. I must say, you all discovered this office far too easily. I worried about getting clever with the name, but... No matter. Overstreet, what are you doing here? Mr. Harris, the incredible gall it must take to break into someone's office, then demand to know what they are doing there? Listen, we need to see Mr. Jonas. This man- This man is a dangerous assassin. Or have you two forgotten your little rooftop adventure? Assassin? Maxwell, you know I've never killed anybody. And I've been acting under your orders. And yet, you've brought these two enemy agents here, Mr. Bishop, along with the missing Secretary of State. Hello, Madam Secretary. Look, I don't know what's going on. Uh, a mess, I'm afraid. But one we can clean up rather efficiently, since you're all gathered here together. Hand over your phones, please. Mr. Flowers, the fuel? Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Fuel? Your... You're burning it. Drastic, I know. But once secure data has been compromised, destruction is the safest response. It's always frustrating to start over, but it won't be the first time. What about us? Like I said, the drastic response is the safest. You... you can't do this. These are innocent lives. I wish you all had left me some option. You're gonna just kill the secretary, too? Of course he is. He's the one who botched the job in the first place. You know, it is always a little suspicious when someone as reliable as Mr. Radio fails to deliver. His subsequent actions confirm that he was no longer the partner we believed him to be. So what, you're gonna burn down a whole building just to cover your tracks? Thankfully, no. The walls in this building are reinforced with steel. The windows are shatterproof and each suite has its own fire door. The flames will stay contained. In fact, if the alarm system in this suite is offline, which I assure you it is, the blaze may not even be detected until morning. Ready, Mr. Flowers? Ready. Well then. Overstreet, this is insane! Why are you doing this? Where is Mr. Jonas? <laughs> Dr. Margulies, you are so intelligent in so many ways, yet you've come this far and you still haven't realized? Realized what? There is no Mr. Jonas. He doesn't exist. Never has. Goodbye.
Episode 6 of Agents was written by Robert Arnold and featured the voices of Marcus Brown as Vince, Kilby Yarbrough as Elaine, Jude Knight as Madeline, Michael Canlarian as Bishop, Stephen Garrett as Omni, Jeffrey Adams as Devon, Chris Jowers as Radio, Robert Arnold as Overstreet, and John Manis as Mr. Flowers. Additional voices by Andrew Chandler and Robert Arnold. Principal Dialogue, recorded by Daniel Lynn at Archer Recording Studio in Memphis, Tennessee. Original score by Eric Jorgensen. Sound effects by Robert Arnold and Karen Strawn, with additional sounds from freesound.org and soundstripe.com. Artwork by Shane McDermott. Special thanks to Kalman Benshot, Karen Strawn, and Marcus Brown. Assistant directed by Karen Strawn. Produced and directed by Robert Arnold. To learn more about Spoken Signal Audio Drama, hear our other productions, and get in touch, visit us at SpokenSignal.com. Hi there. Are you a fan of all things horror? Yeah? You are? Well, in that case, find Tuesday Terrors, which is the mutual audio feed that comes out on a Tuesday, believe it or not. Shock horror, I know. But if you subscribe there, you'll find amazing horror fiction audio in your player every Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday Terrors. Subscribe to the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.